the theory that Joe Budden put out today where so on Drake's diss track push-ups which hasn't been officially released on streaming but everyone's heard it if you're watching this video at this point you probably have heard it yeah he talks a lot about Kendrick's business he says drop and give me 50 he talks about top taking 50 percent of Kendrick's splits he talks about his inner scope deal and still having to pay money to aftermath but the question is, why was that the angle? Why go at Kendrick's business? Why not go at his rapping ability? Why is that where you're shooting? And Joe has knows this, that's where he can score. He can score there. He might not be able to score against Kendrick rapping. But yeah. this this theory, and and we can we can add the the tweet thread in. But Joe Budden sparked a theory the other day that Drake may own a portion of Gamma Music Company and get splits from artists signed to them. Besides Gamma, it's also plausible Drake gets splits from UMG artists. Here's some reasons why it could be true. First, let's take a look at the artists beefing with Drake and who they're signed to. Actually, let me sh share my screen just so you see this. Uh, okay. Do you see this? Yep. Okay. Rick Ross, Gamma. Nav, UMG. Weekend, UMG. Metro, UMG. Kendrick, UMG through Interscope, ASAP, Sony, Future, Sony. Now, if you look at the chart, pretty much all of them are owned by UMG. Besides, I don't think Sony, to my knowledge, is owned by UMG, but the rest. Let's start with Gamma owned by Larry Jackson. Button says while forming Gamma, Larry told him his plan to find the Avengers and create a content mega house. Drake is speculated to be the Nick Fury of this Avengers, and in that, he's the one getting moving and happening keep in mind larry jackson has known drake since he worked at apple before forming gamma drake apple and larry have been good friends for years with drake even having an apple music deal if you remember ovo sound mm -hmm. radio that was apple music if larry was going to pick anyone to be his nick fury drake makes perfect sense here's a list of gamma artists funny enough multiple of these are people who drake has recently collabed with and surrounded himself with sexy red four bats etc Button also called Larry Jackson during his podcast, and Larry commented that he thought the cease and desist was funny. Uh, that this is the uh, cease and desist for French Montana. Again, I don't know that much about that situation. Do you know? Like that one was a little confusing to me. No, I didn't even know what happened until Drake dropped. The, yeah. I mean, until Rick Ross's this. Yes. He said yeah. It. So I won't go there, but basically, this is saying that he promoted Meek and Ross's album and that they're under gamma as well and then they go to this lyric which i think is interesting so on the intro to clb somebody get larry jackson on the phone i need some ownership if we press and go because business is booming on behalf of me again behalf to half 50 percent because business is booming on behalf of me i need a bite out of the apple like adam and eve he needs a percentage from apple and what they're dropping if he's going to do business with apple he also says, man, if your pub was up for sale, I'd buy the whole thing. That was on First Person Shooter. Mm -hmm. Now, we know Drake compares himself to Michael Jackson. Now, here's a theory. Michael Jackson bought Paul McCartney's entire catalog. Right. I remember that. I remember not obviously I wasn't I wasn't alive in 85, but I remember like hearing that uh Michael Jackson actually owned a lot of music. And if he's taking a book out of Mike's bag, Jackson allegedly jokingly replied to Paul McCartney, "One day I'll own your songs." Okay? Now Drake jokingly says allegedly in first person shooter, "Man, if your pub was up for sale, I'd buy the whole thing." Who would he be talking to? I doubt he would buy Kanye's publishing. That could be a Kendrick, and I never thought about this until this. Now, he also says, who the CEO of Universal they mistaken because Google say in Lucian, but that just doesn't make sense because who filling up the piggy bank, who bringing home the bacon? And I interviewed this... Lucian Grange on a red carpet in 2020, and I asked I him, remember. I said, Drake said on Stay Scheming, tell Lucian, I said, I'm tearing holes in the budget. When Drake asks you for more money, does do you give him more money? And he said, Drake can have whatever he wants. He's the greatest. Yeah. And multiple references Drake has about that. 
by basically saying I get whatever I want. I keep the lights on in that building. Drake is basically the LeBron of rap at this point. Yeah. Seems. <laughs> okay, so they actually go into this in this in this theory. I didn't even realize that at the time. Let's focus on UMG. In 2022, Drake inked a huge $400 million deal with UMG, who owns Interscope, Kendrick's label. It stayed as one of the biggest deals in history. Michael Jackson previously held the record for the largest music deal, his being $250 million. So when he says he's topping Michael Jackson, not only is he talking about hits, but he's now talking about deals and catalog. Not sure if you know, but I'm actually Michael Jackson. That's again, so not even what I was saying. He's also talking about all of these. All right, these are the last two here. Gamma and UMG are the owners of Republic, Interscope, MMG, and various other subsidiary companies. The Weekend, Rick Ross, Nav, Metro Boomin, and Kendrick Lamar are all signed under these companies. Could this be why they're all mad at him? Is Drake getting a piece of everyone's pie? Is Drake owning the music that these people are putting out? And when Drake says, drop and give me 50, whether 50% is a stretch or not, is Drake actually saying, rather than it's top dog's pressure, it's, Drop if you want, but you're giving me money from you dropping. So yeah, your album, even if it didn't do that well, I got some of it. If it did do well, I got more of it. I don't. That would be devious, but that would be. That's the, crazy. That's a crazy that's business ultimate, play. That's the ultimate. Like, um, you can rap all you want, but I'm the shit. Like that is, I, I, I'm bigger than you. That's like the ultimate. I'm bigger than you. Pause. <laughs> yeah that's, that's crazy that's actually if that theory is true what do you yeah that's crazy i yeah that would be this is there's a difference between competitive spirit battle and war and that would be winning the war yeah. uh that shows why there's a civil war everyone's like get my publishing back how is this guy owning the music now i don't know if this is true this is all theory the only in- the one lyric that kind of like makes that like oh for me is is uh weekend say, very directly saying i'm glad i didn't sell my soul so i don't it's know so obviously true. obviously these splits be i don't i don't i'm not in these rooms i'm not in the business talks uh the finance whatever of these record labels and stuff so i but i know splits go way more than just two ways like yeah it, it, it trickles down and stuff, but it, it's an interesting theory for sure. It's an interesting theory. I'm in- interested to see how it plays out. And I, you know, I'm thinking that this is only going to be the beginning. So we might have to do another one of these in a couple of weeks to talk about what has happened since, but any last thoughts before we get out of here as to anything we haven't touched on or anything that you think is coming up or anything. What else? if the weekend was this in Kendrick Lamar? No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No, um, no, I don't really have anything. Um, no, that's crazy. I now that you broke that down, if that is what's happening, I don't think I I don't ever think no one's gonna win. I think people are just gonna have to stop because Drake is obviously not trying to out MC Kendrick Lamar, Mm-mm. right? And Kendrick Lamar is not. Well, unless he has some master, he's also on some master shit. Yeah, we just don't see it. Um, he's strategic. I don't think. I don't think the battles are the same. For shit. For for sure, J Cole's battle was not the same as Drake's. That's one thing we could say for sure. J Cole's battle was not to be the master behind. J Cole really wanted to be the best MC. Yeah, I don't think that's Drake's initiative at all. You think Drake wants to be the king? I think he wants to prove that he's the top dog and no pun intended. I want, I think he wants to prove that he's the man, not the rapper. Like he's the man going from the boy to the man. Like, I don't think his initiative is I can outrat Kendrick. And that's why I don't think no one can win this beef unless Kendrick is on the same type of time as Drake is. And he has some stuff to pull out the closet. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. And we'll see if he goes push a T on him. Uh, I'd be interested to see which direction he goes. But yeah, because that push a T beef, not to drag this on, but that push a T beef wasn't even rap beef to me. It was, it was kind of uh, not gossipy, but it was T. But it was push a T, T E A. But, yeah. but at the same time, he did have 
like there were amazing bars there was against yeah there was a lot of facts and i think drake responded his response was good i think the song was pretty solid duppy yeah yeah, I think Duppy I like was it. great. I, I think Duppy was really good. I actually think Duppy was better bars just in the sense of technicalities. But Pusha's tone and how calmly he, you know, did that. In the situation. And, and, and even the way he handled, I always say the best bar in rap beef. It's not the ones that are super overt. Pusha T potentially has the best bar in rap beef. The way he started that song by saying, drug dealing aside, ghost writing aside, let's have a talk about your pride. That, because Drake was poking holes in Pusha T, the drug dealer, and Pusha T's persona. He said, you the middleman, you were ne- like, you might have mm-hmm. sold uh, Coke to white boys for Nike and Mercedes, but you act like you were Escobar in the 80s. Yeah. He was basically saying, you're not the persona. It was your brother and your, and your cousin, and it was him, then him, then you. You were the middleman of this shit. So he was kind of tearing down Pusha T's persona, and... Pusha T, all he had against Drake was who wrote your bars. You know, you're, there's this ghost. But by pushing those two sides to the, pushing those two um, points to the side, he basically left it open to be like, what else do you have on me? Yeah. I don't know how Drake even re- responds. He was searching for things on push. Like there was things that he said he was, you know, there was rumors that he had 100K on his head or whatever. But or like just to, to get information. But I think all he could have found was on Kanye. I think Push's skeletons are pretty clean besides him not maybe being yeah. the biggest drug dealer. So, yeah, which I don't think a lot of, I think a lot of regular people un- could see that already. Like, yeah. Just, yeah. It's like these guys haven't, yeah, they're, they're, yeah. Uh, they're out of jail and hanging yeah. out. But yeah. Kendrick the, might have something though. I don't know. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Hey, I'm not gonna say I love to see it. I'm not gonna pray for anyone's downfall, but I just I'm on I'm I just want good music. I'm team hip hop. Yeah, heat. yeah. I want good diss tracks. Yeah. Somebody said essentially half the rap industry is forming a workers union against Drake. Oh yeah. hell. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Bro. Well, this is my been... one last point. Doesn't even have to do with this. I just want to say this what? real quick. I feel like the Pusha T Drake thing though was more just shock value than anything. Like the moment, the moment held more weight than any of it. Mm-hmm. Like Pusha T, that shit was that was chess. I ain't gonna lie. That was a chess move. It, and and you yeah. know what's funny is he took longer than people thought. And it like this is why I I would say, oh shoot my uh, my iPhone storage. Let me see. I'm just making sure it, it landed. Uh, when did it cut off? Uh oh, just now. Okay, a hundred okay. hundred uh, hour ten. Just wanted to make sure I had it. Okay, yeah. Hour but 10, I would man. say, yeah, I know. I would say push. Yeah, he took long, but he still came back with what everybody agreed unanimously was the 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 winner of that battle since Drake didn't reply. That's why I'm not ever mad at people taking their time. I feel like to feel rushed by the internet right now, like nobody was like when Drake dropped pushups, nobody was like, oh, he took too long. Everyone's like, oh, okay. So mm-hmm. if Kendrick takes a week or two weeks or three weeks, I think it's fine. I'm okay yeah. with that. But I agree with you. It was more shock value than than just bars. Yeah. But I don't want to keep dragging this podcast. I, it's kind of it's that's kind of how it is on diss tracks, though. When you think about yeah, it, yeah, it's who Tupac. Can the the bars that everyone remembers is just shock value. It's he I had, came in. He came in crazy on that song. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, um, even the K dot thing. No one was talking about the actual metaphor. Well, they were, but not as much as it's the just big, big me. Yeah. Like yeah, I feel like it's a little bit just shock value on the diss tracks a lot of times. So yeah, you almost have to have a couple of those. Like I feel yeah. like um, Drake had those in back to back. Like, is that a world tour? Your girls tour? Yeah. Uh, I don't think he had that on Duppy Freestyle. Duppy was that's very fair. that's fair. Slick I don't remember. A, I don't remember a single bar from Duppy Freestyle. I just I like it a lot. Like I could play it and just listen to it. But you're yeah. right. There's no like. There's nothing that stands out. It's just a song almost. Yeah, Meek didn't really have anything besides putting the reference track and then Drake getting peed on, uh, on his reply. Like, you don't you don't remember that? 
It was the weirdest bar. Drake, he said that Drake got peed on by, uh, who is it? Somebody else's friend at a movie theater. It was very strange to, yeah, look, yeah, look. Uh, I don't think we should go there, especially I, okay. after, after the reports and who people were assuming the people were talking about. Yeah, yeah, we don't have to go there. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, it was, yeah, no, you're right. But, uh, <laughs> but crazy. Um. But yeah, listen, we're, we're, we'll get, we'll be back. There will be more. Let us know in the comments if you watch this far. Uh, comment done, D O N E in the in the comments below if you finished this entire podcast. And let us know if you want another one or what you want us to talk about. If there's anything we missed, let us know in the comments. We'll be in there. And um, for Hip Hop DX, as always, if you want to follow me, Jeremy underscore H E C H T on Instagram and TikTok. Let them know where to follow you. Uh, at Deshaun A D E S H A W N A Y underscore. There we go. Uh, what did I say? TikTok on Instagram. Instagram, yeah. Yeah, I don't, I and, don't use TikTok. And and you'll probably see some of his other content going viral yeah. on your feed, no matter what, from uh from the platform. Okay, so. yeah. Anyways, we will get out of here. Appreciate you guys for watching, and uh, I'm excited. Hip hop is exciting right now. Peace.